Over the past couple of weeks, I set out to completely optimize my home theater setups with a singular set of sources serving both my dedicated theater room and my living room. And it's working awesome in the zone two multi-zone setup. So I effectively have six unique video sources at my disposal. An Apple TV 4K for general watching, TV watching, and light gaming. Kaleidoscape for heavy duty, high fidelity movie watching in the theater. A top end, pretty expensive gaming PC. And the gamut of current generation consoles with an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, and a Nintendo Switch. An express goal of mine was to be able to use each of these sources in both my dedicated home theater space and of course in my living room and I don't always want to go downstairs to the theater to game for example. What I also didn't want to do was end up buying multiple replicate source devices. Another Kaleidoscape Strato C it's not crazy expensive but it's certainly not cheap and I really don't need Kaleidoscape in the living room it's just a nice to have. There's no way I'm building two gaming PCs and even having dedicated consoles in each zone is just really a waste of money and completely inefficient for using their features. Multiple individual consoles means introducing many more controllers and having to keep them charged. It means not taking advantage of the awesome quick resume features that this generation of consoles offers as you can't quick resume across two separate boxes. It has to be just the main box or the single box. Plus if I wanted to expand storage say on an Xbox or a PlayStation to hold more games beyond the limited one terabyte they each offer, that means multiple consoles means buying multiple storage expansion SSDs and the costs just start to escalate. So I had this epiphany to really explore the Zone 2 capabilities actually already capable in my system today. I run my theater off of Marantz AB7704 preamp, which offers very capable Zone 2 output. I've read about it a bunch, but I've never actually given it a try before. I run the living room off a Denon X1600H receiver. There had to be a way to run these two devices together, especially with powerhouse or powerful automation that I have available via Control 4 in this house. And oh yes, there was a way. Note that I also benefit in this setup with my physical logistics. My processing gear and amplification for both zones is in the same place in the same rack. And from that rack, I can reach the living room TV with a fiber optic HDMI cable. And I can also get to the theater room projector with another fiber optic HDMI cable. So everything is in proximity and accessible to each other. The rack placement is in a room directly adjacent to my theater, right on the other side of the wall from the screen wall of the theater. And my theater room is in the basement directly under my living room. It's all close together in this like northeast corner of the house. I wish I could say I planned this to perfection, but I'm really just kind of getting lucky with those logistics. So what did I do? Well, the main brain of a Zone 2 system needs to be your most capable processor. And for me, of course, that's the Marantz. You also want the main zone to be the zone with the most full-blown multi-channelist audio configuration. And of course, that's my theater with a 7.2.4 setup. So I relocated all of my gaming sources, all four of them, back down to the storage room, sitting openly on top of my racks for ideal or better controller reception from both spaces. These sources had formerly been in the living room mounted behind the TV on the wall and thus usable only in the living room. So the Marantz offers seven HDMI inputs capable of matrix switching to the main zone and to a zone two. And the Apple TV 4K for the theater room was already down there. The Kaleidoscape was already down there as well. The four gaming consoles make for a total of six sources in the theater main zone. Main zone HDMI out on the preamp goes to my projector, of course, and I renamed the main zone as the home theater in the Marantz menus. The Emotiva amp driving that room speakers is controlled off the 12 volt trigger from the Marantz, but only powered when the main zone is in use. Zone 2 HDMI output from the Marantz then jumps over into a regular HDMI input on the Denon receiver for the living room, also renamed now as living room in the Marantz instead of zone 2. Two amps in the Denon drive the stereo left and right speakers in the living room, and then the receiver goes subwoofer out to the two triad rack amps driving the subs for the 2.2 channel configuration of the living room. Note, I am opting to keep an Apple TV 4K separately dedicated to the theater and another to the living room. Apple TV is the one source that we use currently. 
that I want to be discreetly available in both spaces for use at the same time for watching different things. The rest of the sources would really only be used in one zone or the other exclusively at a time. The Apple TV for the living room, for now, I'm actually just leaving in the living room still. Still mounted behind the TV, direct into the TV via HDMI, and then optical audio out from the TV back down to the Denon receiver in the rack. So Denon input one is the Apple TV on the cable SAT input from the living room. Denon input two is the zone two output of the Marantz. So working with Dan DiCarlo at AudioVision, who's a friend of mine and my go-to custom installer and integrator for my Control 4 system, he created all the input binding source paths in my Control 4 setup. The Kaleidoscape, PC, Xbox, PS5, and Switch all reside in the Control 4 system in the theater room bound to the proper inputs on the, on the Marantz directly for switching in that zone. Then, those same devices from the theater room are also added as sources in the living room, linked as zone 2 switched outputs to the proper input of the Denon and the proper inputs on the living room TV itself. The Apple TV configured to the theater room is only accessible in that room's device list. And the same for the living room Apple TV, it's only in the living room's device list. So there's no chance of crossover between the two Apple TVs or any chance of like mixing them up. Everything switches really smooth and proper, just like magic. Control 4 knows if you're picking a switched Zone 2 device in the living room, and so it turns on Zone 2 power on the Marantz. As soon as I switch the living room back to the living room Apple TV, Zone 2 for the Marantz is powered off automatically. It does take a couple of extra seconds for the devices when switching in the living room and powering on to resync all of that HDMI chain, because again, you're coming from a device through one preamp, through another receiver, to a TV, and it all has to, to propagate and, and match up the EDIDs and take care of all of its handshaking. But it's all been completely reliable so far in my use and my testing. I did notice that the PS5 can sometimes force you to go through the HDR configuration menu again when changing from one room and then the next time going to the other room, but that's not really a big deal. For being able to use one single PS5 with single expanded storage and quick resume of my currently playing game, I'll take the chance that I might have to go through the HDR menu again. The benefit of all of this though is that your source device can be configured for the theater room audio output and stay that way, meaning my Xbox is set up to output 7.1 audio, the Kaleidoscape is set up to deliver Atmos audio, and so on. And so they deliver those signals to the theater's preamp without having to constantly adjust between multi-channel and two-channel setups like I might have needed to do if I tried to use some HDMI splitters or a more complex way to distribute this stuff. Many Zone 2 outputs from preamps and such often though do force stereo to the second zone, which for me though would still be fine as that's what I have in the living room. It's a 2.2 audio setup. But because the Marantz Zone 2 output is going to a full audio processing capable receiver in my case, the Denon indicates that it just gets the full multi-channel original audio signals directly passed through, and then it applies its own down mixing to stereo. Let's give a little demo of Zone 2. So we're here in the living room. Everything is off right now. I mean, I've got the whole spread of equipment. I've got the Control 4 Neo remote, Controller sunk to the computer, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. The keyboard mouse pad that I used to control the PC. I've got my iPad here running both the Marantz and the Denon control apps. Do my best to try to keep everything in frame. And of course, the living room TV off. So everything is off. Denon receiver only has one zone. Main zone is currently off. Marantz preamp has two zones, going a little closer there. Theater is currently powered off. If I tap here, I can take a look at the other zone, view living, living powered off. So the first thing I'm gonna do, it's gonna have a couple of minor side effects, but it will, we'll go over those in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this zone, living room on the Neo remote right there, to the Apple TV. So our TV just clicked, TV came on, lights went down because I have my Control 4 automation set up here in the living room. 
So anyway, the control for lighting control, if it's nighttime and the living room is turned on, then the lights dim to a more comfortable level. So what's interesting here is that if we look up, we see our Apple TV UI. And again, this Apple TV is in the living room, directly connected to the TV. And then we're going out audio out of the TV, optical down to the rack. But the Marantz Zone 2 Living still powered off. If I switch over to the theater, view theater, Marantz Theater Zone powered off. However, Denon is now on. Main zone, Apple TV input. Um, input is two channel PCM, output is two channel. 2.2, of course, because the subs are powered as well. So because the, the Apple TV is plugged directly into the television, and the television is a stereo uh, reproduction source, essentially, it's set to, it's set to two-channel PCM. So the Apple TV is the only device directly connected. Now, let's try some Zone 2. So if I come back down here, Let's go first to the Kaleidoscape. So we'll see a couple of switches. The TV switches to the receiver input. The Denon, I need to rename this actually, has gone to the Xbox input. Oh, it's already up. There we go. Beautiful Kaleidoscape UI. I can control it. I can navigate it. HDMI handshake. So sometimes you get the little double flash Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. I will leave it on Return of the Jedi, one of my favorites. But again, there's no audio because the Kaleidoscape doesn't make any sound when you're on the main UI. So there's no input, no output for audio at the moment. However, let's jump over to the Marantz app and we'll see the theater zone, the main zone, powered off. But if I flip to the living room, there's our Kaleidoscape. All right, so now let's mute this because we actually don't want to hear any audio but we're going to go ahead and start playback of return of the jedi of course i'm not going to leave it up there i don't want any takedowns a couple of flashes that's because we just flipped to hdr mode there's our video signal oh, there's our sound So let's go over to the Denon and let's look at what the Denon is reporting it's getting. Input, Dolby Atmos, True HD. Output is Dolby Atmos, but only to 2.2 speakers. So the Marantz preamp, proving here essentially that the Marantz preamp getting an Atmos signal from the Kaleidoscape is passing it through unmodified as the original source to the Denon receiver. It doesn't force a stereo mix down. Dolby Atmos, 4K, 24 Hertz, auto refresh rate switching and all that. There's the, the classic scroll. Just one more pop again there. Proof of the audio. There's our Kaleidoscape passing through zone two, Kaleidoscape to the Marantz preamp, zone two to the Denon receiver, to the living room TV, sending through the preamp to the Denon receiver, the original Dolby Atmos audio, down mixing it in the receiver to 2.2. And let's stop this. I can unmute now. We'll go back to the Kaleidoscape UI. It takes a second, there we go. Just to show as well, HDR is off. So that other flash that we saw that was going into HDR mode. HDR passes through this perfectly. Let's try another source. I'll go back down here to the Neo. Let's try the PC. Now the PC is already running. Some flashes, some more HDMI handshaking, and there we go. PC desktop, Windows 11, release version of Windows 11 now. So if we take a look at what's going on here, Denon, still on the Xbox input. Technically, that's input two. Again, I just need to rename it. The TV is still on that input three. 
Sorry for the shakiness here. I'm trying to do a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. But we see the living room. All of these inputs I've properly renamed them and mapped them to what they're supposed to be. The living room input is on the PC. And if we view the theater, the theater zone remains off. Let's try another source. How about the Xbox? So this is all gonna stay black. So we did the switching. We've got Xbox, we've got receiver input on the TV. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna power on my Xbox. Oh, we just heard the blink and there's the Xbox UI. Just to verify here, controlling with the controller. Here are the blips and the boops. Marantz preamp, living room zone, Xbox input. TV, Xbox, UI, everything working like it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and launch a game. We'll just resume Red Dead. I played about half of Red Dead on the Xbox before I ended up switching over to the PC and starting over, beat the whole game there. Awesome, awesome game. So here we go, just kind of standing here. You hear some birds chirping, there's some audio. Let's come back down here. The living room zone isn't doing anything on the audio side. Again, it's just pass through. However, if I go over to the Denon, let it kind of catch up with what's going on. There we go. Input PCM 7.1. That's exactly what the Xbox is configured to output. Down mixed to the receiver for 2.2 output. 4K60, HDR10, 4K69, HDR, HDR10, working perfect. A couple seconds to renegotiate. The Xbox dashboard is not HDR. The game was HDR. That's why that took a little extra second. So you can see, if everything was directly connected to the PC, you would get faster, faster switching, faster syncing. Again, we're going from a source device through two hops to the TV, and that, that takes a little little extra couple of seconds for the HDMI to reestablish and do all of its thing. Let's try another one. PlayStation. PlayStation's already turned on. Get some renegotiation. And there's our PS5 UI. Turn the volume down a little bit. Let me turn it back up. You can hear the, the UI noise. But we're running. 4K, 169 HDR to the Sony TV. Marantz, living room zone, PlayStation input. Denon, on that Xbox input, again, I'll be renaming that to receiver. Main zone, 7.1 coming past through. The PlayStation is set to output sound to an amplifier in a 7.1 system. 2.2 audio to the speakers. Working just fine. We'll go ahead and demo the switch as the last source. Um, I do need a little bit of extra support in my Control 4 setup. I have a request out to Dan to check that. I don't think the switch bindings were set fully. However, we can do it manually. So we know the Denon's gonna wanna be on this Xbox input and the TV is still on that HDMI 3 input. So what we can do here is go into the Marantz and we can just manually switch to the Nintendo. Screen goes black. There we go. Didn't take the first time. Gotta wake that guy up in its dock. Boom, boom, boom. Switch UI. Continue. Currently playing Super Mario 3D World with the family. Pretty fun game. Again, Marantz Living Zone, Nintendo Switch, and everything's good. So, just need a quick tweak to be made in the control four bindings and we're good to go. Now let's show the last thing here. So if I go back to control four, I'm gonna go back to the Apple TV input and I wanna want you to see what we happens here. Marantz, living zone power off, back to the Apple TV. So as soon as the system knows that it doesn't need the Marantz to pass a zone two item actively out, it just shuts it off and we have both of these zones currently powered off. Theater off, living room off. 
And one last show. Denon, receiver, back to the Apple TV. There are some caveats to this whole thing, is I did need to adjust some elements of the Control 4 programming. For example, I have Control 4 manage my theater room lights off the built-in Kaleidoscape driver cues, but that programming needed to be protected with conditionals to only manage the theater room lights when the Kaleidoscape is actively an active source in the theater. I don't want using the Kaleidoscape in the living room, for example, to be modulating the theater room lights at all when no one is actually in there. That room should just be dark and off if only the living room is in use as a zone two. I need to add a bit more of this kind of programming protection into various automation elements of the theater room as well, but overall it's pretty simple to do and I can do it all myself in the Control 4 uh, Composer Home Edition. I'm also still going to buy two extra game controllers for the multi-zone use. We will leave the four player pads for the Xbox and the Switch upstairs, but I will single player game mostly on the PC and the PS5 in the theater. So I want Elite Xbox controllers upstairs and downstairs for the PC, and I want PS5 pads upstairs and downstairs too, so I don't have to carry the controllers back and forth between zones. I had already picked up another one of the double controller universal chargers that I like and have it in the theater room sitting on the couch table ready to go for those extra pads. Thus, I can leave the two pads in there charging with the rest of all of my other controllers left in the upstairs hall closet adjacent to the living room charging near this zone. I'm also tempted to pick up a second Logitech wireless keyboard mouse pad to leave one upstairs and one downstairs. Just again, to avoid the hassle of having left the keyboard in one zone, coming back another day to the other zone and having to run back and forth just to grab the input gear. It's far simpler to just outfit the theater with everything I need for my gaming in there and it's, it's just there when I need it. If we take the whole family or friends down to the theater for some four player gaming on the big screen, then in that case, yeah, we'll just carry the four pads down and then we'll bring them back up with us when we're done. That's not that big of a deal and it doesn't happen that often. We usually tend to game as a family in the living room more than the theater. I'm also contemplating how to further evolve this setup. Looking at the device layout, I technically don't even need that Denon receiver for the living room anymore. All I really need is just a two-channel amplifier, and it doesn't even have to be an integrated amp. Whatever processor or preamp that I have running the theater will have main and zone 2 HDMI out that can simply be connected directly to each display device. It doesn't have to go through an intermediate processor. Then for the zone 2 audio, I can use the analog zone 2 preouts on the preamp daisy-chained through to the subwoofer amplifiers and the speaker amp itself. The preamp can then just control the volume for zone 2 itself as well. Doing this would mean a couple of things. First, to maintain two discrete Apple TVs, one for each zone, one for the theater, one for the living room, I'd have to move the living room Apple TV back down to the rack or down to the rack and plug both Apple TVs into the same preamp. With four gaming devices plus Kaleidoscape and two Apple TVs, that's still only seven devices, which is generally at or under the limit for what most preamps can switch. So that still works just fine. A lot of preamps tend to have seven inputs. Some of them actually have eight, so I'd even have an extra in some cases, depending on what my next upgrade is. Gamepad reception to the Apple TV could be an issue though. If I take that living room Apple TV and actually put it in the rack inside a shelf. And my kids do play and enjoy some of the Apple Arcade games. So I'll have to test that piece and work it out. Second, getting rid of that receiver and replacing it with just an amplifier could actually help reduce complexity and costs for my overall system. I know at some point I'm gonna to wanna to be HDMI 2.1 capable through both of these zones in both my living room TV and my theater projector display devices. Swapping the living room receiver for a straight up amp means that only the main preamp needs to be HDMI 2.1. Amplifiers last a long time, but receivers and processors need to be upgraded. And only having to upgrade one preamp in the totality of my system versus a preamp and a receiver is a bonus. I can buy a nice two channel, say like a Basex amplifier from Emotiva for 450 bucks that will strongly drive the two Triad Silver 6s in the living room. That's better amplification at less cost than a new HDMI 2.1 receiver would actually be, particularly if I look at like a Yamaha 
uh, the A4A or whatnot, that's like a $1,400 receiver. Plus, my high-end expensive preamp now in the system is the one actually doing the audio processing and down mixing for the living room instead of a cheaper receiver model. If I had a multi-channel audio setup here in the living room, then going straight to an amp wouldn't work the same and I would want the receiver. But I'm happily 2.2 channel in the living room with no plans or intent to add more speakers here. Everything still works also being 2.2 channel with the separate subs instead of 2.0 since the RCA analog audio signal can be passed through to the sub amps and the speaker amps and the sub amps will perform the proper needed bass management for the subs. I don't need the receiver to do bass management because the subs can do it themselves. It all just works. So going down this road is just so slick and I'm surprised it took me this long to consider doing things this way. Contemplating buying multiple source devices, two Xboxes, two Playstations, etc. would have just been an utter waste compared to reusing the same sources via multi-zone like this. The only limitation could come in if I added more sources than the main preamp could switch, but I don't really see reason to add anything more either. I have every gaming machine possible covered, plus a PC, and I don't require any more video sources than just the single streamer and the single Kaleidoscape. I also don't have any specific designs, probably for quite a while, to do any additional screen zones in the house beyond the theater and the living room. And even if I did, it would probably be in our open basement area someday when it transitions from just a general free kid play space to an older or more adult hangout space, maybe with a pool table, some game, game things like that. But at that point, I'd probably just have a TV down there with its own discrete Apple TV right there with the TV anyway. I don't think that that would be part of this like zone setup. So that's my current zone two setup evolution. If you have questions on this, it's pretty technical, but so if you have any questions or you're looking for guidance on how to realize such a setup in your own spaces, please post in the comments. I'd be happy to answer whatever I can. And as always, please like and especially subscribe to help grow the channel and be ready for more content in the future. Thanks.